Hello out there to you. Let's do some game theory payoff matrix examples. Okay, so the purpose of this video is to give you practice. So what I'm going to do is uh, I have seven game theory problems. I just grabbed them off the internet. And uh, I want you to pause the video, solve them yourself. So you can take like a screenshot uh, of it however you want, or you could pause the video and do it on paper, whatever works for you. Uh, pause the video and try it and then I'm going to give you the, the solution. Okay, So here's this first one, uh, payoff matrix. So we got player B and player A. Um, go ahead, pause the video, solve it. Okay, I'm going to start solving this one. So uh, I just, when I get, uh, when I have these games, these simple payoff matrix, I just solve the, the problem here, okay? So when player A uh, has to choose between doing uh, strategy X or strategy A, uh, they're looking at if, if player B does X, it will be better for player A. It would be better to do uh, X. Okay, so I'm going to circle that in red. I'm going to use red for the left player. And then when player B does Y, it's better for player um, uh, A to do Y also. Okay, so there's their strategy. Uh, and then I'm going to use blue here for player B and circle their outcomes or their best outcomes. So when player A does X, it's better for player uh, B to do X. And then when player Y, or when player A does play does strategy Y, it's better for player B to do uh, Y because three is better than six. So in this uh, game, we actually end up with two Nash equilibriums. So the Nash equilibrium is like the most likely outcome. So we have an outcome where both players choose X, both players choose Y. Uh, that's the answer right here. And notice it says, what are the pure strategy equilibria? So it is possible to have two games. Dominant strategy for either player. There's no dominant strategy. Okay. Because the, both players are dependent on what the other player is going to do to get, um, uh, to get their best, uh, best outcome there. Uh, Looks like the way this question is phrased, uh, when they say pure strategy, they mean um, you know dominant strategy. So actually, there's there's none uh, there. These are these are both mixed strategy equilibrium. But if you're just looking for the Nash equilibrium, then you got that. All right, next one. Uh, okay, so that's this one right here. Pause the video, solve it. Okay, I'm back, and uh, let's solve this one. If I was player one, do you have a dominant strategy? Well, let, let's solve the solve the game first. All right, so if I'm player one, what's better? If player two goes left, it's better for me to go up. And if player, because a positive number is better than a negative number, you always got to pay attention to what the the numbers mean, though. Uh, and then if player two goes right, then it's better to uh, go down if I'm player one. Okay, and then over here for player two, if player one goes up, I'm better off going left. And if player one goes down, I'm better off going left. Okay, so if I'm player one, do I have a dominant strategy? No, because player one strategies depend on what uh, player two is up to. However, player two does have a dominant strategy, and, and player two's Dominant strategy is to go left. Okay, is there an equilibrium in this game? Yes. Okay, that's referring to the the Nash equilibrium. And the way you would write that is that player one is going to go up, and player two is going to go uh, left. Okay, that is the outcome of that game. Okay, next one. Okay. Okay, so. Pause the video and solve this guy. Okay, I'm hopefully back after being paused. And uh, I can write a little bit bigger. Okay, so this one, when you when you see this, whatever this value is, this refers to the left player. 
and then this refers to the right player. Okay. Uh, so when player two goes C, what's better for player one? And that's to choose the strategy of S. Okay. When player two goes S, it's better for player one to go to C because 30 is better than zero. And we'll do this with blue for player two. Um, when player one goes C, it's better to do S. And when player two goes S, it's better to do this one. So this one is another mixed strategy equilibrium. We've got two um, two equilibriums there, uh, depending on what, what's going on. So you might see a problem where the, the probability, if player two knows the probability of uh, player one is to go you know, 80% on that one, then they can make a better decision, okay? So it's that one. All right, here's a little more realistic one. We've got firm A and firm B doing an advertising problem or an advertising game. Pause the video, try this one. Okay, hopefully I'm back after being paused. Uh, so firm A is red. Okay, so firm B advertises what's better for firm A, and that's to advertise. And if firm B doesn't advertise, then it's better to not advertise. Okay, because 20 is better than 15. And then if uh, firm uh, A advertises what's better for firm B, it's to advertise. And if firm A doesn't advertise, it's better to advertise. So Nash equilibrium in this game is going to be right here. So we would say both firms advertise. Okay, that's just the way this game worked out. Uh, firm A does not have a dominant strategy. They have a mixed strategy because it depends on what these guys are up to. And then uh, Firm B does have a dominant strategy, and that's to advertise. And what that means that they're better off regardless of what the other uh, firm does. Okay, we got just a couple more. Here's another advertising game. It's a little blurry, but we got Coke and Pepsi. Okay, here I'm going to switch my colors. All right, so pause the video, solve this one. Okay, so Pepsi is a blue company, so I'll, I'll switch my uh, coloring scheme around. So if Coke advertises what's better for Pepsi, five is better than negative two. Okay, if Coke uh, doesn't advertise, it's better for Pepsi to advertise. Pepsi has a dominant strategy there to advertise. Let's see what Coke's up to. Uh, if Pepsi advertises, Coke is better to advertise. And if Pepsi doesn't advertise, Coke is better to advertise. Okay, so we got a, a Nash equilibrium right here. Uh, this is a this is an example of a prisoner's dilemma game, not because anybody's going to jail. It's just because this is the best outcome. Um, uh, but we're not going to get there. Okay, so when they act in their own best interest, they're going to get to this outcome, which collectively is is worse than uh, all the other outcomes there. Okay. All right, and I mean, we got more. Two more, okay. So we got another advertising game. Two more advertising games. It's heavy on the advertising here. It's fine. Okay, pause the video and uh, solve this one. Okay. Hopefully, I'm uh, back after being paused. I'm I'm tired of those those colors. Let's use some different colors. Okay, so I got individual A. If, if B advertises what's better for A, it's better to advertise. And if B doesn't advertise, then it's better to advertise. So here we've got a dominant strategy to advertise. And then, uh, well, I don't know, purple. Okay, B will be purple now. Okay, so uh, when individual A advertises, it's better to advertise for firm B. And, okay, so just like that last game, we've got both both parties' dominant strategy is to advertise. We've got a dominant strategy and a Nash equilibrium right there. Um, this game actually isn't a prisoner's dilemma game, though, so it's good that I, I came across this one uh, because uh, that outcome is actually pretty good. Okay, if they're both advertising, they're kind of helping each other out. So this is a an example of a mutually beneficial game, we might say. Okay, because if if neither advertises, then we're right there. But both advertising, that's actually better. Okay, so that's. It's that one. All right, last one. Let's smoke them if you got them here. All right, so pause the video, solve this one. OK, 
Hey, I'm back after being paused. And this time, uh, for those of you that are old school, let's just do it in black. Okay. So if American Tobacco advertises RJR, what should they do? They're, they're better off to advertise. If, if American Tobacco doesn't advertise, RJR is better to advertise. So RJR has a, a dominant strategy here to advertise. Let's see what American Tobacco is up to. Okay. So if uh, RJR advertises, they're better off to advertise. And if RJR doesn't advertise, better off to not advertise. Here we've got this is our Nash. This is our dominant strategy. Equilibrium both have a dominant strategy to advertise. This is another prisoner's dilemma because this outcome could be better. Okay, so those are some ways to practice. Uh, with that, just take it just takes practice. It takes grit, and you just got to keep doing it. And uh, if you have uh, any issues, go ahead and email me if you're in one of my classes. Thank you. Bye-bye.